Hi there, and welcome to this PowerShell.org tech session entitled Contains Isn't Like. My name is Tim Warner, and I'm happy and grateful to be your instructor. In this video series, we're working through the big book of PowerShell gotchas. This is a free open source ebook that you can find by using the highlighted short URL or just simply by performing a Google search. This is an open source book that's tied to a GitHub repository. So if you find any corrections or expansions or changes, you can submit those via pull request as usual. Today we're concerned with entry eight, which is called contains isn't like. Let's get right into the code and address this gotcha. Here we are in an elevated Windows PowerShell ISE session, and this script file is called contains.ps1. I will give you the download link at the conclusion of this presentation. But as usual, I start off with just some contact information and then a little bit on setting up an environment that matches what I have here. I'm running WMF5 PowerShell v5 release to manufacturing with all the latest updates. Now let's get into this slowly. First of all, assuming that you've updated your help with update help, you can look at some associated conceptual help files here. Let's run line 24, which looks through all of the built-in conceptual help dealing with operations. Now, conceptual help is something that I'm surprised a lot of PowerShell folks, especially beginners, of course, aren't aware exists. You know about get help, get service, or whatnot if you're looking for command-specific help, but the about underscore help files are wonderful because they're a conceptual knowledge base. So these ones in particular deal with deeply describing and providing examples for different kinds of mathematical operators. So what you saw here is that I ran get help about comparison under underscore operators with the show window flag, show window will bring the help file, the full help file, into a separate window. And it tells us here that operators let us specify conditions for comparing values and finding values that match specified patterns. And that's really the heart and soul of this gotcha. Let's take a look at what we have. I'm going to use start process here to bring up an instance of notepad. Just trust me that I have it running on another monitor. We then have some sample code here that's really quite common in the community. I'm going to load a variable up with all of the processes that are running on my system right now, and then you'll notice that I have a for each construction that iterates through each process in that array and performs an if statement. The if, the actual comparison that we're looking for, are all processes that include notepad in their name. So you'll notice that what we're doing here is taking proc.name to retrieve the name property, the contains operator, and then notepad. Here's the gotcha. You might think that you're performing a wildcard string comparison here, but you're absolutely not, okay? The reason why this is confusing is that it seems to work. That is, if I select this code and run it with F8 or click run selection, the code actually works. And again, you have to trust me that on my second monitor, my instance of notepad did in fact immediately close. So therein lies the gotcha. You think that the contains operators performing a string match comparison, but it's actually not. Here's the deal. As I've explained on line 38, because the exact string notepad exists in that collection, the get service collection, the code works as expected. Now that process is variable. If we run the get type method, we would expect that the results in the pipeline consist of an array or a sequence of members, a collection, a data collection in other words. But check this out. What if I change this contains to something like this, star note star? I mean, if you've been in a command prompt environment for any length of time, then you're accustomed to using, using the asterisk wildcard operator. Will this work? Let me use the control key and my mouse wheel to roll out a little bit. I'm going to select line 28 to bring the notepad in, and then we'll select 29 through 36 to run the code. Well, that didn't actually do anything. It didn't produce an error, but as you can see, I still have my notepad instance running here. So once again, there's the problem. Well, how can we fix it? We come down to 50. I have some, some intermediary code that you may want to take a look at on your own, but in the interest of time, let's jump down to line 50 here. We'll do the same thing. We have our notepad instance already in memory. We're redefining the processes variable just the same way that we did before, but look what's happening. Here we're using the like operator. Now you know that when you're in ISC, you have IntelliSense. So I can just do dash and then let IntelliSense drop down and notice it gives us a whole bunch of operations. Not only is there like, 
but there's also not like. Like is a wildcard matching operator, as you can see, and by default, all of the PowerShell operators are case insensitive by default. Like should be your friend if you've used the structured query language or the SQL database access language, and it allows you to do a simple wildcard comparison. Now, you notice my parenthetical comment here. Star means a different thing, I've found, between a Windows systems administrator and a Linux Unix systems administrator. Linux Unix folks tend to be very familiar with the grep tool and use of regular expressions. We can, in fact, do regular expression string matches here. In this case, we would use match. Now again, I'm using tab complete there. We have case insensitivity by default, but if you do want to do a case sensitive match, you could do C match. Let's bring that back to like, and let's select the lines. And yep, I'm looking at my taskbar, and notepad is definitely gone. To illustrate that a little bit further, let's take a look at line 61. I'll define a variable called names that includes three server names. And then if we run that against get type, again, no surprise, we see that that's an array. We can run comparisons with operators directly by taking a reference value and then comparing it to a test value. So in this case, if our reference is this array, we're asking, does this array contain server one? And that's going to return a Boolean true value. If we do a names C contains, that's a case sensitive contain server one with uppercase S, we should see that that's false. Similarly, we have negation operators, the not options. Does the names array not contain capital server 3? That's absolutely true, but what if we edit this to make a legitimate entry? We would expect and we see false. So you see what I, we have here? The bottom line is that contains, not contains, C contains, C not contains are set operators and not intended for string matches. When you run contains, you're looking for an exact match on a member of a data collection. Now, somewhat confusingly, we have another operator that's also a containment operator called in, and there's a whole bunch of options there as well. The main difference between in and contains is simply the order in which you do your test value and your reference value. For instance, contains, we have the reference values on the left, and then we compare with a given test value on the right. In, we start with the test value, in and then the reference values. This is a nod to help those who have a background with the structured query language get their C legs. We have to remember that Windows PowerShell includes a lot of what's called syntactical sugar that gives us an environment that's familiar with what we already know and now we can apply it in Windows PowerShell as well. So as an example, we still have that names array. Let me just echo it down below. Server 1, Server 2, and Server 4. We can ask, is the test value Server 4 in the collection of names? And that comes back to, is the value Server 3 case sensitive, not in names? And that also is true. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this presentation. You can download the script that I used in the demo from the URL timwarnertech.com forward slash contains dot zip. This video series is officially housed at youtube.com forward slash PowerShell org. The community site is at simply PowerShell.org. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, curiosities, suggestions for improvement, suggestions for new topics, you name it, <laughs> whatever, right? Contact me at timothy-warner at pluralsite.com. Alternatively, you can locate me at Twitter. My handle is techtrainertim, and I'm on linkedin.com. Thanks again, and happy PowerShell showing.